can you believe it? I'm into a fish straight away. I thought, well, usually you have to warm your peg up a bit, so I, I put a six mil halibut pellet on. I'm fishing up in the water. I'm making a program today on pole fishing up in the water and, and using mainly pellets for feeding and on the hook. And I would just, just put the pole out and start to flick a few, few pellets around my float and suddenly, I didn't even strike, and this is, this is what happens with this method, suddenly the elastic just shot out and I'm into a fish. I don't know what it is, but it's a, but it's a goodies fish straight away. Now today I'm fishing at a complex of lakes called Maver Larford, very close to the town of Stourport and also close to the River Severn. The River Severn, probably if you look about two or three hundred metres across there, maybe a bit more than that, you see a line of trees and that's the, that's the River Severn. So. But, it's, but it's a commercial fishery and it's really well stocked. This is, this is one of my favourites. It's owned by Phil Briscoe. He's a very, very good friend of mine and uh, he lets me come down here when I'm making these, these type of programs because it's, it's, there's so many fish here. It's just a terrific place to come and, and try things out and for filming it's, it's good as well, it's clean. This particular lake is, is the match lake. This is where most of the matches are, are held. And then beyond that there's a the specimen lake. And there's another lake down to the right which they call the arena. Oh, this is a good fish straight away. It's nice, as I said, I just hooked that one. Just that one six mil pellet. This is typical of the sort of fish there are, isn't it? <laughs> it's whizzing away, this one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Dear, it really is scrapping. Don't expect this. And you fish it just, it was taken, must have been taking those few loose feed pellets. Oh, and straight away into a lovely two pound, to probably two, I think it's, is it a carp? Some, there's a lot of F, there's a lot of F1s in this water. Let me just get the hook out so I can show it to camera. There's a lot of, F1's in this lake, and this one is a, it's typical, let me just dip him in the water, give him a drink. Yeah, this is a, this is a, probably an F1, about two pound. An F1 is a, there you are, a beautiful two pound F1. Really great fish to start with. There'll be loads more, I'm sure. Now I was using one of these larger pellets, a jellet, which is a, a jellet is a soft hookable pellet. And this particular type is a, is a halibut jellet, but it's just a, a little bit tougher. I'll be fishing with expanders later, but this is just a little bit tougher than an expander pellet. And I thought, just at the start, I'll have a little go at, at feeding and using a hard pellet on the hook. I'm fishing probably about a little bit less than two foot deep there. In, in it's probably something like five foot of water there. And what I did. While I was feeding in the beginning, particularly, I just rested my pole on this, on this bar while I fed. Leaves two hands free, particularly when you start fishing. I'm not putting many pellets, I'm feeding four mil, four mil carp pellets. Just, the carp respond to the noise of the pellet going in. Now I've left that float sitting up a bit so that you can, you can pick it up on camera. When, you, when you're fishing up in the water, you don't really always have to have the float ultra sensitive. Little fish knocking at it now, but you get lots of signs as you feed of line bites. 
So as you go in and flick your pellets around there, float's gone again. But you don't hit, you don't hit every little bite. In fact, you don't hit the bites, you, you sort of more lift into them. But, but really, just as I've started fishing, I'm trying to, trying to get a few fish there in the feeding area first. And then my normal method would be, when I'm fishing up in the water, would be to fire pellets, sort of two or three pouchfuls, not too many, five or six pellets. Just fire them round the float. I usually do that two or three times and then, then lift the float up and drop it down so that the pellet you've got on the hook would then, so I'm dropping that pellet down now over where I've loose fed those pellets. But that's a bigger, heavier pellet. I'm looking for big fish straight away. Do that two or three times. Keep the bait on the move, really, all the time. Once I get the fish feeding, then I usually just change the feeding a little bit to to rest in the pole there. Once the fish are there, I like to rest the pole on my knee. Oh, one, one shot away then. Didn't take it, just, just went for the pellet. Once I get them feeding, I just like to rest the pole on my knee and flick it. I can almost lift the, lift the bait out of the water with just the, the, my knee and my arm so I can keep feeding all the time. That's the secret of fishing up in the water, just keep feeding all the time to get the fish up, to get the fish up and competing. When you get a, a bite, just sort of lift into it. Oh, comes a helicopter now. Every now and again, there you are, and I'm into a fish. Into a fish while the helicopter goes over. Every now and again, you could just feel the fish tugging on the, just, just hitting the bait. But don't worry about that, just keep flicking the bait in until you hook the fish. I didn't strike, I just lifted into it, almost with my knee. The fish virtually hooked themselves. Now this is, Today is a teeny bit overcast, but it's still a, quite a warm day, probably about 20 degrees centigrade. It's late spring, so a perfect time. The fish have already spawned. We had a really warm spell a while back. The fish spawned, so they're really hungry now and feeding well. Just letting the elastic do its job. Once you ship back, then just watch for your pole to get on your rest behind you and then just ease back, letting the elastic do the work. There, we're into a fish, you can see that, it's just a hollow elastic that I've got on there. Another lovely fish, oh, beautiful. I do love these F1s. F1 means it, it means first formula, it's the, it's the first crossbreed of this particular type of carp. And you can tell them that if you look at them, if you look at them quickly, you think, oh, that's a common carp. But the best way to tell, they fight as, they fight as much in your hands as they do in the net. There you are. And if you, could, if you, look at the, if you just look at the, the mouth here, the barbels are very tiny. Whereas on a common carp, they're quite long, so little tiny stubs, almost like a crucian carp hasn't got any, so there you are. Another fish, probably about a pound and a half. But beautiful, really, you can see how hard they fight. And as I say, my favorite fish. I like to use expander pellets on the hook, sort of feed half hard pellets, but use a soft expander pellet, and, and lots of anglers are frightened, they think, expander pellets, what are they? Well, they are, they are a pellet which come in a dry form, they float naturally, and you have to prepare them 
for the hook, you have to use, I've got a bait pump, and you have to use a bait pump to extract the air out of the pellet, and at the same time as you take the air out, the water goes in. So I'll show you how to do it, it's quite simple. And I'm going to, to do two sizes today. This one is a, is a Vandenine RS Elite. It's a light color, colored pellet, light colored or dark. It doesn't really matter when you're fishing up in the water. On the bottom, if I'm fishing on the bottom, I particularly like light pellets. I'm chip a few of those in there. They're the four mils. And you can do different sizes as well. So I've got some six mil prepared as well. So some six millimeter, I'll just open that bag, put a few six millimeter in there, larger ones. And then when you're fishing, you can, you can try both sorts. Now a pellet pump is just a vacuum pump. And I like to use the water. Let's, let's add my, one of my favorite liquids when I'm fishing for carp is Scopex. I'm just going to add a few squirts of that. Once again, this is a Vandenine. It's a liquid additive. I'm going to put two or three squirts in the water. I usually prepare my pellets when I leave home, before I leave home. And uh, I've got a, a pond in my garden, so I use the water from that. I wouldn't advise using tap water, perhaps rain water. From a, from a water butt is fine, but I don't like to use tap water, it's got too many chemicals. So this is a pump, and you'll see that all you have to do is use this vacuum pump to, to take out the air. Take out the air, form a vacuum in there, it pulls, and as you do it, you'll find that any pellets that are sinking will come up to the top, but Take this, this air out and then if you press the valve, just take this off the top, press the valve and you'll see these pellets will start to gradually sink down. You usually have to do it two or three times. Can you see some of them sinking down? Do it again. And those now, those that have sunk will come to the top again. You, as I say, you usually have to do it about three times. There's a few more going down there. There's just a few left floating, so I'll, I'll do it one more time. What happens is I tip the odd floating ones away. You'll see those coming up to the top again, look. But it takes, only takes a few seconds. Let the air out. You have to release the air from this valve in the top here because otherwise you can't get the lid off, because it's a vacuum. In fact, there's no, 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 they were all floating at first, and now if you look in, in the top, there's none floating whatsoever. Let's get rid of those. All you need to do then is just tip them into a, let's tip that water away, we don't need, you don't need much water. Just gonna tip. I usually like to just cover them with water and then leave them for about probably 20 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes. As I say, I usually do them before I leave home. And then by the time I get to wherever I'm fishing, they're perfectly well done. But I leave just, if you look at that, just enough to, to cover the pellets. And then that last bit of water will soak in. They're quite hard, you can't use them, but in about 30 minutes time they will be perfect. Now I'm feeding with these they're four mil feed pellets. This at this particular complex you have to use the the pellets from the shop. They don't let you use your own pellets. They don't trust you to use some some people can use sort of trout pellets and they, they're they're quite high in oil and, and so fisheries quite often ban them. These are normal coarse fish pellets, carp pellets, and, and a four mil. If, you, if, you, if I'm anywhere else, then I use the Vandenheim ones, which are, well, they look, they look exactly the same. They are four mil, they're a carp pellet, a feed pellet, hard, just for feeding, not for using on the hook. You need to just slightly wet them, a little bit of water on them, before you start to fish, to soften them up, and I've done that to these already, just to soften them up slightly. 
just 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 enough that makes them a little bit heavier and you, they keep together nicely when you fire them out. So that's that's my choice of feeding for this style of fishing. Two mil pellets are not big enough, you can't get them out, so you need at least four mil, sometimes six mil. Now I've stopped feeding for a little while, so there might not be any fish there, but the um, that's great, you know, two fish straight away without, without hardly any effort. So I'm going to go out with this, one of these big gelets again. Now these, these gelets, let me show you those. Vandenheim once again, they're a soft hook pellet, uh, but they're harder than an expander. So if you've got a lot of small fish, I, I favour using these. So they're bigger pellets, so they, they usually pick out the bigger fish. And they hook on so easily, but they're a bit tough. So if fish are flying around and just knocking the bait, the pellet still stays on the hook. So I always like to have the option of using, if you look at how I do that, how I put that pellet on, I'll just show you that again. What I do is I take the pellet and sort of take the flat end and just put the hook through the middle of that flat end like that and then tease it round just tease it round so it's completely buried but can you just see on the side there can you just see how the hook is I've brought the point of the hook out so it will hook onto the fish but most of the hook is buried in the pellet and then it's a matter of it's always with fishing is feeding keep that Keep that rig nice and low as you go out. You're fishing fairly shallow, so it's easy to tangle it. Keep that nice and low as you go out. Let's hope there's still some fish there. It's been a little while since I've fed, so it might take a, a couple of minutes to get them there again. Just as soon as you stop feeding, the fish go. So that's the real art of this up in the water fishing is is, is small amounts of bait, but very, very often. They just hear the, the noise of those pellets going in and of course they react to that immediately. And soon you'll see signs of fish coming round, just as I start to feed again. Two or three pellets, then I'll lift and drop it, drop it back in, that's, that's quite often when you get the bite when you fool a fish, as that pellet is dropping back down, look at that, as that only took three factuals that time. As that pellet was dropping back down through the water, a fish took it. It exactly explains, oh, oh, that one come off. I was mucking about chatting to you too much, wasn't I? You will lose an odd one. Let's just do that again. That one just shot off, but when, when, you, when, you're, when you're playing these fish, in fact, look, the pellet is still on. It just shows you how hard those, those pellets are. The pellet is still hooked on, so I didn't really look. I thought, oh, I've lost a pellet. So I could have just dropped back in there. That's why I love those gelets when there's lots of fish around. But it took three pouchfuls to get a, to get a bite then. So back out again. It's just a lovely way to fish. It's an all action way. It's hard work because you have to keep feeding all the time. Just keep feeding. A few pellets. Oh, 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 dear, that's incredible, isn't it? That is incredible. How many fish are there out there? I've only just started to feed again. And what I do, this is what I love to do. I love to <laughs> I love to feed as I'm flying the fish. I always think about the next one, so I'm flicking a few, few pellets in there, thinking about the next fish. Now let's get this one in. Oh. The fish are really up. As I said, the temperature's quite high, so the fish are up in, up in the water anyway. F1s, these particular strain of carp, love to be up in the water anyway. Naturally, they love to be up in the water. So if you get the opportunity, that's how you want the fish for them. This one's fighting quite well. 
See that elastic? <laughs> See that elastic doing its job? Gotta watch, I've got a big, I've got a big lily bed to my left there, so I'm just keeping the fish, steering them away from that. Oh. That's it. Wow, this is all action, non-stop. <laughs> and once you unship then, just keep the pole down a little bit until you get the fish just near the net. Really doesn't want to stop this one. They are such hard fighting fish. <laughs> this is terrific. Really wants to go. They knows those lilies are there and it's scrapping for them. It's not a particularly big fish. It's probably only about probably only about a two pound fish, but really fighting well. <laughs> God, what a fight! This surely has got to be a normal carp fighting like that. But it isn't, no, it's a normal, you know, it's a, just a, just an F1. Let me get the hook out before I, ooh, just before I show it to camera. Just drop the hook out. They really are lovely looking fish. All a similar size too. This one probably around about two pound. But a beautiful fish. Terrific for these type of commercial fisheries. Match fishing and just general pleasure fishing. A wonderful fish. The rig that I've prepared for today is specifically for up in the water. Fairly light rig. The hook is a size 18 and it's a Fox Strong Barbless. It's a carp hook but a strong one so a fairly short shank but it's, but it's perfect for pellet fishing. You want a, a fairly wide gape hook for pellet fishing. It, it says it's an 18 but if, if you really looked at it probably something more like a 14, so it's quite a big hook. And the hook line is 0.12, which probably, let's have a look, is, even I have to look sometimes, 0.12 millimetre, that's a high tech line, but it's about three and a half pound breaking strain. And it's a pre-stretched line, so, it, so it's a high tech pre-stretched, which means it's, it's much thinner for its diameter than a normal monofilament line. And it's clear and white so the fish can't see it. When you're fishing up in the water, you want a very, very clear line. So that's it, that's 0, 012. And then I've got a, a probably a nine inch long hook length. And there, just there, you can see I've done a knot there. Just a very small knot. It's a, I call it a twisted overhand loop just to join, it's about a 95% knot strength, so it's a very, very strong knot. And then the main line is 0.14, which is probably four and a half pounds. So the main line is a little bit stronger. I've got three number 10 stots, three small shots, elongated shots on the line there. Probably set that about midway, so that when I drop the pellet in, it will drop sort of from the top to the bottom naturally without any weight. The weight, that weight is about mid, mid, midway between the two. And then up to the float. Now this float was uh, designed by a good friend of mine. He is the product manager for Fox, Mark Pollard. And he designed this float. It's called an MP, which means Mark Pollard. And uh, this is a, an MP2. There's MP1s, MP2s, MP3s. But this is a fairly slim bodied float with a carbon stem there. I've put three pieces of silicon on to make sure it doesn't move. A very, very strong, robust eye that, that you need that when you're carp fishing that won't pull out. 
and then quite a thick antenna. You need to see, see the antenna. It doesn't matter. As I said earlier, you don't need a sensitive float. You just need something that's going to support the bait. So when you put a big heavy pellet on, you can't use a really fine bristle. You need a, a reasonable size bristle. And then I've got a, a short distance, probably nine inches between the connector there and the float. Just so fairly short with a, a, an overhand loop there. An overhand loop knot, make sure you do that. An overhand loop, I might show you that later. The elastic is a hollow, hollow elastic, about probably equivalent to about a size 10 in normal elastic. But it's a hollow elastic and I've got it set through two sections, so quite a long, long distance. But it's really, I love to use hollow elastics for carp fishing. They're much more forgiving. They stretch more, but they've got lots, lots more power. And you could see that with those fish I was catching earlier. So that's the rig and the idea is, as I said, is to go out with the rig and then just drop it in the water and for the pellet to start at the top and finish at the bottom naturally. And this good hook size is, is just perfect for these four and six mil pellets. Those expanders are nearly ready, so I might try one of those. It, it doesn't matter, I just love these. I love these gelets because they are quite tough. So I've buried that into the, into the pellet itself so the fish can't see it. Still with the point coming out though. Now because you're fishing that really short line, when you ship out, keep that rig. As long as you keep the rig in the water, then it won't tangle. And just watch the point when you come off of the end of the rod rest. As you go out, just watch because there it can jump tried to set that rod rest. I've tried to set it so it's perfectly balanced and there it, if I get hold of that, it's almost perfectly balanced. And then out. Just drop it. I love this new pole that I'm using as well. I haven't had it very long. It's a, it really is, it's called an, an envoy, or elite envoy, fox. It's got this lovely finish to it where it slides through your hands so easily, which makes a difference when you're fishing, especially when you're shipping in and out a lot, you know, when you're going backwards and forwards. The, the finish on the pole is so important. Let's get them fish feeding. I've been chatting again, so they... See how I lift that pellet out of the water, drop it back in? Don't always have to look at the float. You can quite often, quite often you can feed and suddenly you can feel a pole whiz round as the fish as the fish take the bait. You sort of all just just have to lift. And you've got to get those fish there again. So I've been chatting away so it takes a little bit of time just to flick back. The float will disappear but just lift just lift into it. You don't have to strike too hard. Usually the because they're they're flying around taking these pellets that when they when they take the one on the hook, they take it with such force that the fish hook themselves. Just got to get them back there again. If you didn't feed, you wouldn't catch anything, but you've just got to get them. Oh, I just felt the pole knock then. <laughs> the float went, and I just felt the pole knock, and I just, when I feel it, I just sort of lift into it. As I see the float disappear, I just lift up into it. And there. The fish is on. Do you see that? As I dropped it back in, and it's right, I've got it right on the top. It's a smaller fish, this one, I think. But just lift it into the fish. Hmm, just, just come off. There's two we've lost. Don't know whether I hooked that one properly or not. I think I did. I just was was lifting in and lifting out and getting the fish. You've really got to get them competing. That's a that's the most important thing. And these gelets, being as they're a little bit tough, sometimes you don't always hook the smaller fish perfectly. If you say if it's a big carp that took it, they hook themselves easily. But the smaller fish, sometimes they don't quite get hold of the pellet. They're a bit greedy. And they're not really 
probably not really. They're taking a smaller pellet than that. They're not really used to taking that big pellet, but they're so greedy, they just have to have a go at it. But you can go straight out again and carry on feeding, and that float disappeared immediately. Once you get the fish round there, you imagine they see that pellet going in, and one of them has to have a go for it. <laughs> and there you are, it's in. <laughs> oh, I see all the other fish disappear as, as I did it. <laughs> You see all the other fish surge away. And I've, I've hardly fed at all. Just incredible, this up in the water fishing. Such a tremendous way to, to catch fish in the warmer months. You, you can sometimes in winter catch them like this, but a lot of people come fishing, they think, wow, they always start the fish on the bottom, which you can do, but when it's warm, you can also catch the fish up in the water. Just got that fish in nice and close. There. They're all lovely fish. All good quality, all over a pound. <laughs> Look how quick they take the bait. So what I mean about how they fight in the net. Quite often when I'm fishing, I, I like to, I can, you can just unhook them in the net and tip them straight into your keep net. Say if you're fishing a match or something. That hook come out on its own. There. It just doesn't take long. That lovely, massive, big tail. That's where they get their power from. Look at the size of that tail. <laughs> there. I'm trying to hold it a little bit gently. I don't like to hold fish too tightly, but once again, you can see if you look at its mouth, it's got no barbel, so it's, a, it's a, definitely an F1. And look at that big, like a fan tail. Lovely fish. Incredibly, incredibly powerful, really, for their size. A perfect fish for this type of water. The important thing when you're fishing up in the water is that, that you must hold the pole correctly and be able to hold it while you're feeding. And uh, there is, you can get something which assists you in this. This is called, here, it's called a spray bar. So you can rest your pole on the spray bar. And if you, and, and, and sort of, most pole seats are designed, let me just see if I can show you, this one here, where you've got a piece here where you can tuck your pole under. And you do that more Say when you, today there's just loads of fish, but if you're not catching too many fish, say you you might have to feed for 20 minutes while you're waiting for a big carp, then it's nice to, to tuck your pole in there, lay it on the rest and just, it leaves two hands free to keep feeding. And the other way of course is, is, when, is what I'm doing at the moment, when there's loads of fish I just rest it on my knee, but I'll show you both methods. There's so many fish out there, they probably, I really ought to go out without a, without a pellet on, but I can't resist it. I love these halibut pellets today as well. I think these are just about perfect for fishing out there. So when you sh so you're shipping out, let's do the spray bar first. Watch it just as you come off the end. Watch it. The pole roller should be nicely balanced. Keep the rig there in the water. So once you get out to where you're fishing, you, you just tuck the pole between your legs and set it on your spray bar. And set your spray bar so, I've set the height, you can adjust the height so that the pole is up off the water. You don't really want your pole bashing on the water. Because what happens is, of course, that the, the fish, you can, you can tap odd times, but you can disturb the fish. So then, I haven't even got to hold the pole. This, how, this is how I am. It's resting on the spray bar. I, it leaves me two hands free to feed nicely around the float. I can just keep feeding. You see that float will go, you can see one or two fish topping as well coming to the surface. You can see the float just knocking. Now they're line bites, but suddenly you'll see the pole I'll do it in a minute. I use, usually I like to get the bite by lifting and dropping it, but you'll suddenly see the pole go, sometimes go flying round once I get the fish there. But you don't even have to hold the pole. Two hands free, so you can fire your catapult. 
just as you normally would. These are this is a lovely four mil pellet. Just check to make sure I didn't lose my pellet. No, they, are, they do stay on the hook really well, those. Those pellets are quite tough. So there, I'm just holding it. Don't really want the line pulling on it too much. That was pulling on it a little bit. Too oh, 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 there you are. I hadn't even got hold, hold of the pole then and wallop. That's a perfect way to catch fish up in the water. But they hook themselves so you don't strike at every bite, you just lift into it gently. Then, once you, you get the fish away from the feeding area, try to pull it out of the way of the feeding area. Keep the pole down low. Try to keep the elastic all the time coming out, so you've got some tension on the elastic. Ship it back until you get to your roller, then forget about your roller then. Once you've, once you've rested on your roller, forget about that. You can come back to right where you're unshipping to land the fish. Keeping it down. Now that fish hooked itself. Just feed, feed, feed. <laughs> and now it's decided that it's going to run away. They're amazing, these fish. I don't know where suddenly they find their strength from. They just suddenly roar off. But that elastic is perfect. It's, a, it's a, as I say, a size 10 fox hollow elastic. For all my carp fishing, I just love to use hollow elastics. See the hook just out of his mouth. And another F1 safely in the net. I'm just going to put that one straight in the net because I'll, while the fish are there feeding, I want to get straight out. Let's just drop that in. I want to get straight out and show you the other technique of holding the pole on your knee and feeding when you've got loads of fish. Another one of these. Not, not missing hardly any fish today because they're just hooking themselves. Leaving that just leaving that hook so it's coming out of the pellet so the hook point is exposed. Imagine once that hook point goes into the fish, they feel it and they, they, they fly away even more. And that's when they hook themselves. Lovely, just keeping that nice and steady. I've got that roller set perfect, so as it comes off, it's, it's sort of just, just the balance, the pole is balanced, it's not going up, it's not coming down. That's easy, the easiest way to do it. So when you're resting it on your knee, once you go out, now to rest it on your knee, it doesn't leave your hands quite so free, but when I'm catching lots of fish, I prefer this method. All you do is, if you, if you trap your pole with your forearm there, over your knee, so you've got your pole trapped, it leaves your two hands free to feed. The only thing you have to do is, I felt a little knock then when I was, when I was fishing, the only thing you have to do is just remember that put your, your pellets in the pouch as normal and then all you do is, because you can't move this, this, this right hand has to stay still, so you just have to reverse the way of feeding with the catapult. You push the catapult forward. So you go like that. So you just push the catapult forward. And all the time you can be lifting with your knee. That's why I like this method when there's a lot of fish. So you can almost be lifting. A little fish took it then. Still pellet still on though. That's why you'd like to use a hard pellet when there's this many fish. I think it was a little uh, skimmer or something to try to take that big halibut pellet. But you can... All the time you can be feeding, lifting, dropping. See, I try to keep those pellets nice and tight around the, around the area. And when you see the float disappear, you can just, just lift into it. You don't have to strike so much, just lift into it. Quite often, though, once, once they take the bait, there's fish tight on the surface now. They just see how, how, the, how more of them come round. There's fish topping. Now you hope they're going to take it as you drop that pellet back in. Really making a grab for it. 
But if you think about it, the pellets you're feeding are quite hard. They're, not, they're, they're, a, they're hardish pellets, so it doesn't matter to use a, a hardish pellet on the hook. It's just that I'm using a... a oh, <laughs> that one bent the pole over and took me bait. I was just laughing and, and, and the pole went flying over and it took my bait. But that's exactly, let's do, we'll, we'll try that again, that's exactly how you do it. And of course I'm talking the camera and chatting away, so I'm probably not really concentrating on my fishing as much as I should be. But first of all, a little fish took it, didn't take it, but that last fish was probably, probably hooked because it took the pellet, so, and, and, the, and the, the pole just went down into the water. I'll get out of there as quick as I can. That's the secret, really. You have to, is you, because you're feeding and you're keeping them up in the water, you need to be. Once you once you stop feeding, and the fish drop down, they go out of the way. But to get them there, you just have to keep these few pellets going in all the time, and you'll see the fish start to come to the surface. All the time that I'm getting signs at this fish there, quite often they're line bites, they don't always take the bait. But once, once one does take it, then you know it's on. <laughs> like that. That took it on the drop, that one. I think I'll just get this one in. So it just shows you there's the two methods of holding the pole while feeding, which is so important for up in the water fishing. If you think about it, if you can't hold your pole or have your pole correctly positioned, so that you can feed properly, then you won't catch. So it's important that you need to do that. It's incredible, and they're all just took perfectly in the lip. <laughs> it's quite powerful, this elastic. It's a good fish. These are all pound plus fish. Fantastic. Oh, that's incredible. Just non-stop. Non Once you get them there, it's just non-stop action. Just hooked in the lip. Really is fabulous fishing. Quite often when you're fishing and the, the bait is being interfered with by small fish, say you're using one of the halibut pellets or, or a soft expander, you then need to use quite often a, a hard pellet on the hook to deter these small fish. And there's different ways, to two different ways, two main different ways to, to attach this. Of course you can't hook a hard pellet onto the, you can't put your hook through it, so you have to use a bait band. Now a bait band is it's just a flexible band, if I can show you it. Just a flex, a small band, and you, and you put it around the pellet. There's different size bands for different size pellets, and normally when you're fishing a hard pellet, you'd probably, and I've just pulled that. If you can see that, I've just pulled that band over the pellet. And then all you do is just put your hook through. I'll show you. Just put your hook through the pellet. like so, so you just put it, put your hook through so that it sits like that, as simple as that. So that's, it's a bait band because you're fishing up in the water and the fish are grabbing like that. And not always, it doesn't look very good, but, it, but quite often it doesn't really matter because they're flying around so much that they just grab at it and the hook's completely exposed and on the side. So that's that's one good way of attaching a hard pellet. The other way, you can, and if say it's, and I quite often favour this, if, if the fish are a little bit more crafty, what I do is I drill the pellet and you can pull the band, if you drill the pellet with it, use a small sort of one and a half mil drill, go through the, go through the flat end, so go along the pellet, just drill it through, and then, once I've drilled it, 
make sure that it doesn't split. Sometimes pellets, if they're not very good, they split when you... So I've drilled a nice hole through there. If you use a baiting needle, so put your baiting needle, put the pellet on the needle, and then, once again, get a, get a small band and pull that. If you put it on your baiting needle, just stretch it and pull it through. Just pull it through there. And you'll find that you can then, it sort of put your hook, let me get this out again, you can then put your hook through the, just the end of the band, so it doesn't look quite so, there, just put it through there, pull it a bit tighter, but you sort of, you can put it through there, or you can put it through this other end, sometimes I put it through this other end, and then, then cut off that, that bit of surplus, or put it through here, just underneath, and just through, so it it doesn't look so much. If you then trim off this piece here, if you imagine, if the fish are a little bit more suspicious, you can't really you can't really see any of the band. Then it's just coming through, and it's hooked through a hard pellet. So it's as easy as that. Will it work? I don't know. Shall we try it? Just depends what these fish are like today, but I should imagine it will work. So that's a, a six mil rock hard pellet. Plenty of the hook exposed. And just out. I didn't change the rig on that. Normally I use a slightly heavier rig. I've got a, if the pellet, if you use an eight mil pellet, you quite often need to use a a bigger rig on that. We'll probably just about get by with this one. Once again, it takes a little while of... See, it's pulled that float lower in the water, though, that heavier pellet. But they'll... You've just got to get them feeding, that's all. It only takes two or three pouchfuls. Oh, to get <laughs> that one took me by surprise. Only takes two or three pouchfuls to get the fish there. That's a... <laughs> Just shows you how it works. You see that big hook sticking out, you think, well, nothing's going to take that. And then one does. And that fish actually wrenched the pole out of my hand. as it took it. Look at that one after the other, these beautiful F1s. <laughs> you see, they, they suddenly start to fight when they get in. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, terrific fish in lovely condition. They really are in beautiful condition. Probably pound and a half to two pound every one, so imagine if you were fishing a competition, you would have you'd only got to catch 50 of these for a hundred pounds. That one's hooked just down inside the mouth. Let's I usually have a disgorger for this called a slamo, which is a just a particular type of oh that's it. Disgorger that gets it out every time. Lovely. And the pellet. There. Let me just get hold of him properly. There. Lovely, probably about a pound and a half, but a beautiful fish. But if you have a look, this is why sometimes it's good to use these hard banded pellets. I haven't lost the pellet. It's straight on. I've even used a disgorger and everything on it. And the pellet is there, straight away. Can go out and use that again straight away without any problem. This rig is a little bit light for that uh, heavier pellet. I've got another one made up with a, with a slightly thicker tip and a slightly heavier flow and, and slightly heavier elastic as well. I usually, usually when you're going to catch these fish on hard pellet, they, they usually are a little bit larger in size. Similar hook size and everything I've got, but just a little bit more heavier elastic. I'm going to hook that pellet on just like I did that last one, just through the end. Just 
through the end so that they don't they don't really see the bait band. There. And it's quite firm on there. If you, if you think about it, if you do, it's quite a you know it won't pull out easily. You can probably catch sometimes quite a few fish on the same on the same pellet. But this is that's probably what I'd use if I was using say eight mil or ten mil fishing up in the water for big carp, this is better. For the F1s, those are, oh, I dropped my catapult in the water. I'll have to get that out. I don't know when I did that. Oh, I know, when that last fish just wrenched the pole out of my hand. These F1s, probably those halibut pellets are good enough, but if you start to catch sort of four and five pound carp up in the water, then often the drill pellet is better. Might need a shot off at that float as well. I shot these floats up at home. <laughs> I usually do them at home and then adjust them as I get to. In fact, I'll show you how. Oh, it didn't make any difference. Oh, just shot straight off. That's heavy elastic too on that one. Look at that one go. God dear. Oh, this may be a bigger fish on that harder pellet. Looks like it. Is it a proper carp? It's certainly going, isn't it? <laughs> I'm still feeding. Notice how I still feed. I always worry about the fish that's going to come next. So this elastic I've got in here is like equivalent to a size, probably be a size 14. Hollow once again, but see how forgiving it is, how much it stretches. I hardly ever use solid elastics now at all for carp fishing. Well, that didn't take long, did it, on that heavier rig? It's not a particularly big fish, it just flew off. They, I, I find they do vary a bit, these, these F1s, in, in the way that they fight. Some fight like mad, and others come in easy, and this is, this is a fighting like mad one. <laughs> but see, that's like a 14 elastic, but see how it's stretching that elastic. But the idea is you want the elastic to stretch a bit. You don't want to bump the fish. You just want the elastic to stretch a fair way. I can't get this fish round. Can you believe that? I'm trying to get this fish round the side of my net out of the way. It doesn't want to come round. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a slightly bigger fish, but... Straight down. Yeah. It's... It really is all action, isn't it? This up in the water fishing is just non-stop action. And that one's took it straight down as well. They must be getting hungry. Last one did the same. I'll have to use my slammo on that. Took it. The pellet and everything must be inside it, I should think. Just get my disgorger in there. Oh no, it's only just inside the mouth. Look at that though, the pellet there again, I can go straight out, put that F1 in the net, pellets there, that hot, rock hard pellet that will stay on the hook. Well that was great, a fish straight away on that, on that newer rig, but it needs, I noticed it was dropping the float right down, so it needs one of these shots removed, and I'll just make a small adjustment. These stock leads are not easy to remove unless you've got the right tool, and this is a, as, as like a, it's called a, a stot or a style remover, a shot remover. They can remove ordinary shot or these elongated ones. If you just put it, put your line through those two slots and push it, pull your line tight and just clip it, and then the shot comes off easily without damaging the line. So that's perfect. That should be okay now. That length should be just right. Let's get out of there. Hopefully the fish are still there waiting for me. Well, it's been a fantastic day's fishing. I mean, there's been fish all the time I've gone out there. It takes, usually takes a minute or two of feeding to get them there, but it's been fish all the time taking the bait. And of course, once you're chatting away, the fish just drop, and then as soon as you start to feed again, they're back. Oh, that, that's better, that, 
that float is a bit more out of the water now. As I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be ultra sensitive. It needs to be a nice big bristle to support those heavier pellets. And just if you're on a really big heavy pellet, just keep taking shot off until the float's right. Just drop in. I'm feeding all the time, lifting and dropping. Just all the time feeding. Waiting for that one big carp to move in and take the bait. Oh, there it is and it's on. <laughs> oh, fabulous fishing, fabulous fishing. Well, today really has been the perfect example of these fish really have a lot of power perfect example of pole fishing up in the water how you feed all the time keep feeding loose feeding to keep the fish there little and often remember the two different ways the two main ways of of holding the pole this is important so that you can feed with comfort you don't really have to strike, let the fish hook themselves. Just keep lifting, dropping. So no real strikes and then it's almost a fish every cast, every time you go in. And two different types, main types of pellets, soft and hard for catching the fish. There is another perfectly hooked F1, just hooked in the side, pellet still there, in its mouth, pellet still ready, I can go back out, so we've already had two, I can go back out and catch another one, pole fishing up in the water, it's brilliant. <laughs>